Carl Cleghorn, Executive Chef at Thornbury Castle. Today we are going to be doing a farinaceous dish, uh, which is starch based. We're going to be making a uh, tagliatelle from scratch, uh, which will go through the processes of making the pasta to compressing it in the backpack machine, leaving it rest to roll in. Then we are going to make a uh, chestnut mushroom uh, broth which is going to be the base of our tagliatelle. Then we're going to finish it off with uh, some semiji mushrooms, some fresh uh, chestnut mushrooms that we're going to noisette, um, and then incorporate the dish together, finishing off with a bit of uh, summer truffle. So come on to the kitchen and let's get started. First job that we need to get done is making the pasta. So we're going to take our 250 grams of double O flour, We've got our three eggs. We need to separate those into two whole eggs and one egg yolk, and we'll discard the rest of the, uh, the egg white. Um, we've got our olive oil and a little bit of pinch of salt just for the seasoning of the pasta itself. So, in the robo coop, we're going to add the flour, crack those eggs. With a fork, just gonna break up the eggs to incorporate them together. And that's just gonna make sure that when we put it into the RoboCoop and the pasta starts to, to form into a breadcrumb, that we've evenly mixed all of the egg up. So it's really important that you don't add all of the egg straight away. Pasta, flour, depends on the room temperature. So, you know, if it's cold in there, that the, uh, the egg might not take all of it. If it's a bit warm, it might take all of the egg itself because it's all down to the temperature of the actual flour. So we're going to add three quarters of the egg to start. Just a splash of oil and a lovely pinch of salt. So lid on, seal it and then we're just going to start it off first of all. You're going to let it go for around 10 seconds and then we're going to stop. We're then going to get a marise and just wipe around the whole bowl. And as you can see, it's starting to turn into a breadcrumb. Okay, this is not quite ready. This is still a bit dry, so we're just going to incorporate a tiny bit more of the egg while it's blending. Once again, stop. And as you can see, it started to come together and form a pasta dough. So now we're going to remove it. Okay, now we're going to turn it into a ball. So nice, clean, sanitized bench. And we're going to empty out the breadcrumbs onto the clean surface. And now we need to really incorporate it together to help work the gluten. Okay, you just collect all the breadcrumbs if your dough is a little bit moist at this stage don't be afraid just to add a tiny little bit of sprinkled double O flour on top and as you knead it it will just incorporate in and it will make it slightly drier so that's our dough okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna backpack it. I like to backpack my uh, pasta dough. It just helps to compress all that gluten, all that egg in. And what you'll find is that it'll intensify in the color. So the egg yolk, the nice, beautiful, vibrant yellow will not turn it enormously yellow, but it will intensify that pasta color. So we're going to pop that into, we're going to place it into the backpack machine. Um, make sure that the, the bag is over the side of the lip. Why backpack? Uh, backpacking enables us to remove all the oxygen from the bag completely, which is technically going to preserve um, the product longer because that's how bacteria grows, is with moisture, oxygen, with inside humidity. So by removing the oxygen and taking out all of the air, that's gonna allow us to compress the product even more. Allow it to run its full cycle, and that depends on the setting that the backpack machine is set at. Uh, some are 30 seconds, some are 45. Just depends on how long it takes to uh, 
pressurize the chamber itself to remove as much oxygen out completely. And as you can see by the bag, all the air has been removed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this into the fridge and let it rest for around 15 to 20 minutes. So uh, if you look at your recipe cards, uh, the produce that we have uh, today are going to be chestnut mushrooms. We've got 500 grams and then around 50 to 60 grams of spare to finish off the tagliatelle. Uh, we've got diced butter for cooking, some fresh tarragon, shallot. We're only going to need one. I've pre-peeled it. Um, we've also got some mascarpone cheese, some garlic puree, some fresh uh, brown semiji mushrooms, some double oak flour, uh, parmesan, summer truffle, and also a potato. And the potato, well, I'll show you a bit later what that's gonna incorporate for. So let's get on with the mushroom broth. So we're gonna take the one large banana shallot. Um, we're gonna cut that in half lengthways. Just gonna take off the stalk. I've left it on while peeling it, just to keep the shallot whole. Discard the top into the food bin and then we are going to th thinly slice this. And the reason why we're going to thinly slice it rather than just chop it up nice and thick is so that we're reducing the cooking time. That way we're going to um, keep as much of the natural sweetness from the shallot uh, when cooking the actual base. So now we're going to get on with uh, all the mushroom prep. So first of all, before we get on with the chestnut mushrooms, we are going to prep down the smidgy mushrooms. So the smidgy mushrooms, yes, they are a wild mushroom, they're cultivated, So, but we need to wash them. We need to wash every mushroom. They grow in the ground, we don't know what's been around there, uh, so we need to make sure that we get all of that excess dirt out. So I'm going to show you the process of washing the smidgy mushrooms, but I've already pre-washed the chestnut mushrooms. So depending on the type of mushroom itself, um, you know, if you've got your rolls, uh, chanterelles, all those type of mushrooms, they need to be washed multiple times. So it's very good practice to have multiple bowls set up with ice cold water, with a chinois and a tray ready to go. So literally the mushrooms go in, you give it a quick stir, you take them out, you put them into the next bowl, the next bowl, and then you strain them straight onto a tray and you let them dry out. Um, and the reason why you need to be really quick when washing the mushrooms is because mushrooms are like a sponge. If they stay in the water for too long, they're gonna take on all of that excess water, which is not what we want when we're cooking. We want the actual proper flavor. So to prep the smidgy mushrooms, we're just gonna take them out of the packet. And we don't wanna take off too much of the length. So there's always gonna be smaller mushrooms to larger mushrooms. We want them to be nice, cups okay so we're literally just going to then chop them and we're not going to use them all we're really just going to probably use around a quarter of the punnet for one portion the only time that i'd really take off too much of the stalk is if i was to uh, pickle them or make an allegoresh that they're going to be used as a, a cold uh, garnish to something so now on with the chestnut mushrooms ready for the uh the broth so just going to do them singly once again, nice and thin, uh, and that is just purely for the reduced cooking time. So start cutting the mushroom and then turn it onto a flat and then once again, just keep on slicing the mushrooms. We're going to repeat that process with every single one of them. It's a very tedious job, but it's really important, the consistency of the slicing to be able to really cut down that cooking time to make sure we maintain as much of the flavor as possible. So, knife skills in the kitchen are really, really important. And I can't stress enough that self-practice makes perfect. Um, you know, it's your job to be cooking, it's your job to learn, but it's also your job to make sure that your self-improvement is progressing along with your professional career. Um, your head chefs, your sous chefs, your junior sous, even your chef de parties um, are there to support and teach you with inside the kitchen environment. Um, but it is your responsibility as well outside to make sure that you're improving your particular skills, whether it's cutting thinly, whether it's julienne, brimoire, um, everything comes to practice. And if you don't practice, you'll never get better. So as you see, I'm also cutting on a green board. Uh, so green board is for uh, washed and ready to eat uh, products, whether it's fruit 
or vegetables. If you have a brown board, then that's usually used for any product that needs to be peeled or to be washed. So for instance, uh, a carrot or an onion, you would peel it um, on a brown board and then you would transfer it later and finish the cutting process or prepping process on a green board. So it's been 20 minutes, uh, let's get the pasta out and start rolling it. We just wanna now slowly work out the pasta with our hands, with the palm of our hand. And this is just purely to get it a little bit thin to help it through the machine. We wanna start it on the first thickest setting. And that's, we're gonna go down a couple of stages, then we're gonna fold the pasta, then we're gonna put it back to the thickest stage, and then we're gonna repeat the process. Reason why, we wanna work the gluten inside the pasta. That's what gives it its strength. That's what gives it the, the texture that pasta is. It's really important that your pasta machine is clamped to the surface. I'm just gonna sprinkle it just with a tiny little bit of double O flour. If you want, you can use a uh, semolina. Um, semolina is great. Uh, they use it all the time for pasta. And the reason why, it doesn't incorporate itself uh, into the pasta. So now we're going back through on a slightly lower setting and I'm just going to take it down to the next setting again. So I'm just going to help it through, flip it over and now I'm going to help drag it. And while you do that, you want to slowly stretch it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold, fold again, fold and fold again. Okay? And we're just creating layers and really helping that gluten come together. We're gonna then take it back to the thickest setting. Make sure you just spread out the pasta once again to make it thin, slightly thinner. You don't want it to exceed the, uh, the width of the pasta machine. So you go down one setting at a time. You don't want to overstretch the pasta too quickly. Um, so you just want to brush your hand over, just check the moisture, check how dry it is. Um, just because the thinner it gets, the more fragile it's going to get. So if you need to dust it with a small bit of uh, double O flour, you can do at this stage, just to stop it from sticking when it's going through the pasta machine. So now, as you can see, you can start seeing my fingers underneath the pasta. That is a good sign, okay? If you can see within the light, your fingers is slightly transparent, that is a perfect thickness for tagliatelle, uh, spaghetti, pappardelle, whatever you wanna do. So now we are gonna give it a s one final uh, dusting with double O flour. And this is just so that when we come to cut the pasta, it's not gonna stick together, that we're gonna be able to pull it apart nice and easily. Um, so instead of using the attachment for the pasta machine today, I'm gonna be cutting it by hand. Deli, spaghetti, linguine, pappardelle. It all depends on the length that you want. Uh, so we're gonna work at a 30 centimeter um, today. So as you can see here, we've pretty much got double-sided and that's around 60 centimeters long, okay? So I am going to slice that in half, just nicely on the, the surface. And then once again, on the extra side. Now, for the two end pieces, what we are gonna do here is we are just gonna slightly square them off because we don't really want the straggly ends. So they can just be kept on the side. You can use them as a tester when you're cooking your pasta. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold and roll this around. Now we're gonna just slightly cut off the one end and that's to give us a nice straight end. So we're gonna discard that. And Tagliatelle, we're really looking at around three to four mil. So we're just gonna, with a nice sharp knife, we're now just gonna cut nice rounds. So 
we've come to the end. Now what we want to do, turn it around, square it off again, and now we just cut directly in half. Okay, and now what we want to do is we just want to really, really gently open up this pasta. So because we are using it straight away, we're just gonna, once again, lightly flour it. But if we were to dry it, we'd have to sprinkle it with the likes of rice flour and put it onto a specific stand so that it can dry out for the space of an hour and a half to two hours in a nice, not too humid environment. Uh, it needs to be slightly warm um, just to help the, the pasta just completely take any moisture away from it. And once that's dried, we can store it um, for up to two to three weeks, no issues. There you have it. There's your freshly cut tagliatelle. We're gonna split the tagliatelle into two portions. Um, the reason why is I want one for your tutor to taste, and I want one for you to taste. Because for you to understand the, the comments of uh, the techniques, the flavor, the seasoning, it's really important that you know exactly um, what they're talking about. And by tasting your food, it's how you gain more knowledge and experience on whether it's um, praising or criticism. All criticism is good criticism. That's how we learn. Right, so now we're gonna start uh, cooking the mushroom broth. So we're gonna put a tiny bit of oil into the pan, followed by just a few knobs of butter. And the reason why we put oil in the pan as well uh, as the butter is to stop the butter from burning. So once the butter has fully melted, so I'm stirring the pan to help melt it even quicker and to help it stop from catching in any random places. We're gonna put in our sliced shallots. And then we're just gonna season very, very lightly as we cook them out. Just gonna reduce the heat on the induction hob because I don't want the shallots to, to take any color at the moment. So, while these are cooking, we want to cook them out so they're nice and slippery and they will go slightly transparent. I was always taught and it's always important that you season as you go, not season at the end. You want to cook the salt out. You want to bring the flavor together in a different elements and the different levels during the whole cooking process. If you add just salt right at the end, you're just adding raw salt straight into a product, and the majority of the time is you may have already seasoned it. You could be coming to someone, um, someone's dish that you don't know that they've already seasoned it, and before you taste anything, um, you add the salt, and all of a sudden the dish is ruined, or the product is ruined, because you've added too much seasoning to that product. So as you can see inside now, the butter's foaming. If it stays in one place for too long, it will start to slowly noisette. It's really important that you're not really tasting a lot, but you're also tasting the butter and the shallot to make sure it's where it needs to be. So now we're gonna add the chestnut mushrooms. And just like all other mushrooms, button mushrooms, field mushrooms, whenever cooking them um, into something, you're always gonna have some sort of uh, water release from the mushrooms, no matter what. Um, so we just need to make sure that when we cook it out, is that we keep on stirring, and if there is any water that has come into the actual product, for instance, the, uh, the broth that we're making today, that we just reduce it down slightly because we don't want that um, extra water in the dish. We want to be able to sweat down the mushrooms to the point where they're nice and dry so we can get a slight caramelization on them to really bring in that lovely, sweet, nutty flavor. So as you can see, the mushrooms have started to cook down. They've started to sweat. 
they've started to get that little bit transparent um, color to them. As you can see, like there's, there's random mushrooms in here that you can see that are slowly becoming a little bit transparent. All that extra water has now disappeared, okay? So what we wanna do now is, as you can see it right at the bottom of the pan, is that slight caramelization, okay? So it's not burnt, it's caramelization. So you just need to keep on working it now and just make sure that you keep on constantly stirring the mushrooms and really get down into that caramelization to, to take all that extra sweetness straight off the bottom of the pan. So now the mushrooms are exactly where we want it. So what we're gonna add is, we're gonna add one liter of uh, veg stock to the pan, scrape down any excess mushrooms. And as you can see already, you've taken all of that caramelization off the bottom of the pan. It's deglazing the pan. That's where all the flavor is. It's no different to making sauces, um, serum meats. The flavor lies in the pan. And that's what we want. We want to maximize the amount of flavor that we've just gone through with the process. It's really important that we taste this again. We've added more product to the saucepan. Um, the water is diluted down whatever seasoning we've done before. So we may have got the right seasoning on the shallots. We may have got the right seasoning on the chestnut mushrooms. But now because we've added the water, all that seasoning has been dilute, diluted down. So the flavor is still there but we need to increase that seasoning now to enhance that flavor, to really bring that mushroom flavor back through so it's punchy. So. So we're just gonna turn down this temperature slightly because I don't want the, the liquid now to reduce too much. I wanna retain as much of that liquid as possible. Just gonna turn it down slightly on my induction hob to around seven-ish because I still want a slight boil to it um, to continue cooking that mushrooms to extract all of that flavor now. So now the chestnut mushroom broth has had time to boil out. It's been around 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so as you can see, you've got a beautiful dark mushroom color, but also a lovely clear broth. So what we're gonna do, final taste. And that's purely just because, obviously it's been cooking out for the last 15, 20 minutes on a lovely simmer, very gentle boil. Um, if it's reduced, what's gonna happen is it might have intensified the seasoning. So it could be slightly salty. So if you need to, if it's slightly over, just add a splash of water to it. And I mean a splash, just to help dilute that seasoning because it won't need any more. So we're gonna take this off now and we are gonna slightly blend. So now we're gonna slightly blend our mushroom broth and by slightly, we just wanna really just break down the mushroom very, very lightly. I'm not looking to make a puree. I'm not making it to look it thicker. I'm just trying to extract a little bit more flavor from those mushrooms. So we're gonna. And that's it. Straight through a chinois. I'm just gonna help it through, pushing all that excess juice out of those mushrooms. So in the kitchen, um, we wouldn't discard all of this mushroom pulp. We could turn it into a puree, or what we tend to do is utilize it for a carbonara or something for staff food. So we're utilizing the, the whole product. The liquid is what we use for the restaurant. That's what we use for our guests. The pulp, because of the way it's been cooked, um, and the way it's finished, it's not quite to the standard that we would want to be serving to a guest. Yes, you could probably puree it down. You would have to put a little bit of flavor into it, whether it be soy sauce, miso, whatever you wanted to put into it, but it's still not gonna be the quality because it hasn't gone through the right cooking processes for what you want to, might use it for. So that's why we would only use it for staff. Okay, so now let's bring the dish together. So we've got our mushroom broth, we've got our tagliatelle, 
We've also got our Samiji mushrooms, which now you can see, um, they're lovely and dried. The cups are no longer um, holding any water, so it's all been extracted. We've got our diced butter. I've now got my pan of water, uh, which has got a tiny bit of oil in it. Um, and also we are gonna season this water as well, okay? And that's gonna help season the pasta. I've also got my pan here, which we're gonna be using for uh, to saute the mushrooms. And this is what the mushroom sauce is gonna be cooked in. So we're just gonna turn this on. So I'm gonna turn it on to eight, just to start getting a little bit of heat. While that's doing it, we're gonna return back to the other chestnut mushrooms that we left earlier. I'm just gonna cut them into quarters. Right, so now we've chopped our mushrooms, we're gonna head straight over to this pan. The tiniest, the tiniest bit of oil. Just gonna mix it around once again. Not too much butter, but enough. We're gonna allow it to drop. We wanna stay with it, because once it starts in the wazette and we get that lovely nuttiness, that's when we're gonna add our chestnut mushrooms straight in. So now the butter's dropped, we wanna keep on moving it around and you'll slightly see that it'll start turning a little bit brown, like it has now. Now we wanna add in our mushrooms. Then, slightly season. Keep on moving them. You don't want them to stick. If you let it stick in one place for too long, the butter is now gonna burn. We don't want that. We want that lovely nuttiness to help with, to intensify the flavor of those chestnut mushrooms. Keep on stirring it, keep on moving it. So once the chestnuts, about about 30 seconds to a minute, I've used the smallest out of the chestnuts purely because I want to uh, have the cooking time down as, as much as possible. So now the chestnut mushrooms are done, we're gonna add our samijis. I'm only gonna add half the amount of samiji mushrooms in. No additional seasoning at this point. So now we're going to set a timer and we're going to add our pasta to the basket. Now we're going to add the smallest amount of garlic puree. And right now, you should really be able to smell that lovely, nutty, earthiness coming from those uh, mushrooms itself. So once you've got a lovely saute on those mushrooms, then we are going to add around 200 ml of mushroom liquor. Bring it to the boil. Reduce it straight down. We do not want it to reduce right now. And now we're gonna add some mascarpone cheese. You can use uh, whipping cream or double cream. Double cream you will need to reduce so it's really, really thick. Um, you will get a lovely buttery richness off it. Today we're using uh, mascarpone cream cheese um, as the thickening agent in this sauce. It's just gonna give you this lovely creamy richness to the sauce as well. So, Back to your tackle the telly there. Just give it a little stir. We want to taste the sauce. And you shouldn't really need any additional seasoning at this point. We've seasoned the mushrooms. It's exactly what we wanted. Our mushroom broth was seasoned to the right seasoning that we wanted it to be. We've added it, we've come brought it to the boil, then we've added the mascarpone um, to really bring the creamy richness to it. We've got one minute 20 left on our tagliatelle. Some fresh tarragon. A sharp knife. 
will cut through the herbs without bruising it, without turning it brown. So we're just gonna bunch it up, put it into a little bowl, bring your knife in, and then we're gonna chiffonade. Chiffonade is thin, really thin. Um, and it's a, it's a very classical knife skill to have. And to be able to chiffonade well, takes practice. So now we've got our tarragon. So what we're gonna do is, I'm not gonna chop it anymore. So straight into the mushroom sauce. So time has gone off. Uh, the pasta we've put onto a tray with a J cloth, just to take any residual water um, from the pasta. And then we've added it straight into the sauce. We're just going to give it a nice mix around in the sauce. And then that is ready to be served. So now we're ready to plate. I've got a ring. That's where all of the pasta is gonna be contained. So if you've got a pair of tongs or you've got a carving fork, um, wrap it in to all the pasta around. Bring the pan to the plate and incorporate it on. Straight into the ring. We're gonna take the remainder of the mushrooms, just scatter them on top. We're gonna to finish this with a nice dollop of Parmesan. As I said earlier, the potato. We have our truffle, truffle slicer. The potato is so we can get the right thickness for the sliced truffle. So we use a potato because it's cheap as chips and literally we find our right thickness before we start slicing into that truffle. Because a 450 pound for a summer truffle or 950 pound a kilo for winter truffle, we can't afford in the restaurant to be wasting any type of product. So we're literally now And then we're just gonna lift that off very, very lightly. It's gonna slightly drop, which is fine. And there we go. So there you have it. Um, you have a fresh tagliatelle, a chestnut mushroom broth, some midget mushrooms, parmesan, and summer truffle. Um, it's a beautiful dish, flavorsome, very seasonal, very classical. But yeah, it's simple, so have a go and do your best.